morning everybody. Welcome to day two of this project. Yesterday we stuck on this Amazon special Stingray cargo rack and even though it's not a Yakima or a Thule, it's a really solid rack and I'm very impressed. Yesterday I took it out over all sorts of bumps giving it every opportunity to loosen up, fall apart, bend, whatever, and it really hasn't. And although I haven't loaded it up yet, um, I'm very optimistic that this thing's going to do exactly what I need it to, which is run a full-size spare. Um, I currently you know, run the undersized spare under my truck, and because I'm about to go on this overland rally, I need a full-size spare, and I don't want to take up my bed space, so the cargo rack is the answer. However, with the full-size spare, I'm going to cover my third brake light, and I think that's really unsafe, not to mention illegal. And I hate running with limited illumination. So, I have this aluminum light bar laying around with inserts for these LED trailer lights. And these are a little bit upgraded. And they're really, really bright. And we yesterday we mount, uh, welded these mounting tabs on and got this thing all set up, ready to run, uh, to replace that limited illumination that I'll be getting with the rear spare. Today, I'm going to show you how to tap into your 7-pin harness and seamlessly integrate this light bar with your taillights. So, let's get going. So this is your 7-pin connector, right where you can plug a trailer in. To make my life a little easier to start off with, what I'm doing is I'm going to actually let it just hang down so I can get at the uh, plastic shielding a little easier. And there's just two bolts at the top that hold it in. Now it's hanging down, you can see, maybe you can't see, but there's plastic shielding right here which I'm going to need to cut into. But luckily, your wiring diagram or your pinout, it's right on the cover. So remember that if uh, you're going to tap into this yourself, um, all your wires are right here. Now what I'm going to do is carefully cut into this shielding. It's pretty beefy shielding, so if you're going to use a knife, Better be a sharp one, and be careful. Don't want to puncture any of the wires while you're doing this. Now comes the task of actually tapping into these wires. There's several ways to do it. A lot of people use what are called T-taps, I believe, which is just a little plastic snap Thing with a little uh, copper blade in it almost that you snap over the wire and it digs in. I don't really like that because you run the risk of destroying the wire strands that exist in this wire and uh, the T-taps themselves can become loose over time and kind of jiggle off and it's, I don't know, it just seems like a pretty crappy solution to me. Uh, T-taps have worked great for a lot of people. However, what I'm about to propose isn't all that easy, so if you want to go with T-taps, be my guest. Um, what I like to do is actually use a very sharp knife and gradually kind of shave in to the um, insulation of the wire until the wire strands become visible carefully because you don't want to damage the strands. So first light I'm going to do are the tail lights which are they're the running lights. So I'm just going to take my very sharp knife and get this which is the green wire by the way Take my very sharp knife and begin to shave away the insulation until, alright, I can start to see the wire strands. Now I'm going to get a big enough cross section. So you've got a pretty good cross section in which you can see the wire. And then, because this is the taillight, I'm only doing one wire. Because it'll be grounded through uh, the light and the other wire. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my wire and wrap it so the strand, I want to strip enough so that I can wrap bare wire around a couple times. Actually I'm going to take off a little more insulation. And I'm going to take my soldering iron. I like to solder all connections because soldering is very solid and doesn't damage either wire. And you're not relying on a mechanical connection. Actually, well, you are, but it's like they're welded together. You're not relying on an external mechanical source like a plastic clip or something. 
Then I'm just going to apply heat. And I'll just kind of foil the solder in. And I'm going to burn myself a little bit because that's nice. I like doing that. That should be a pretty good connection. Then I'm going to wrap that up with some electrical tape and uh, do the same thing for all the rest of the wires. Now something interesting I found out while tapping into this harness is I got all the wires wired up and uh, I found out that the trailer harness actually has two slots. They don't have a specific brake light slot. They have um, a dual stop light, turn light, uh, two of those functions. So basically, whenever the turn signal is going, it overrides the brake light and makes whatever side that brake light is flash. That's okay if you're running all red lights, because a red light can act as a blinker. However, an amber light or an orange light can't act as a brake light. So, I was like, crap, what am I going to do? And then I realized, I'll just tap into the brake light. Um, I can still use the tail lights from the wiring harness, so I'm going to leave that. Uh, but currently, I'm just going to kick off a brake light and tap into the wiring there because I know that has separate blinker and brake lights. Okay, so here's the brake light. Er, stock Toyota tail lamp. Sorry, there's a lot of confusing language in this video. Um, so here's the blinker. Green with yellow is power. Green, or uh, white is ground. The brake light is right here. Well, brake and running light, or tail light. Um, I'm assuming green, is there green with yellow? Uh, Looks like there's a green and a green with red. I'm going to have to double check. And then there's a white, which is ground. So I'm going to tap into the blinker and the brake light, but not the tail light because the tail light's already wired up. All right, all the wires are soldered on and insulated. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually run the wires underneath the truck as tightly as I can in the most efficient path that I can. And the best way I've found to do this is uh, just take a handful of zip ties, um, some goggles, not because there's anything really dangerous, just because when you're reaching around and your truck's been a little dirty, dirt falls in your eyes and it really sucks. And then I have a nice uh, like roller, rolly bed. I don't even know what they're called. But yeah, just go to town. All right, I just have one connector left to solder on. Um, for connectors, I'm just using waterproof connectors that uh, I actually didn't pick up any yesterday, like I said I would. Um, I'm just harvesting them from an HID kit, and I had a leftover Baja Designs connector. So, two of them are the same, and uh, I'm using like a single pin connector, waterproof connector that also came with the HID kit for the running lights. So two of them are the same, and those are the blinkers. And one of them's different brake lights, and then the single pin is obviously different. I do not recommend soldering up against your truck because you could possibly ruin the paint. But I'm a risky guy. Don't.
All right, guys, we are not quite done, but we are done enough to close out this video. Um, I've got the wire bundle wrapped in electric tape running through my bed up this bed rack into the cargo rack. More zip ties needed to clean that up. That's fine right now. And then here are the running lights. Now before I get comments, I know the left brake light is dimmer than the right brake light. I went through everything to check why. I checked the ground, I checked the power source, I wired them up in series instead of parallel, nothing helped. Then I wired direct power to each one of the lights individually and I found out that the left brake light is just a little faulty and won't shine as brightly. So I have new lights on order, those should be here soon, I'll replace them and uh, hopefully they'll be evenly bright. I don't actually know why. Um, only the red lights work as running lights, the orange ones are not on. That's fine though, um, I'm actually not worried about it. It might be due to uh, the wires I've or just the wiring setup I used and it's not getting enough am amperage to actually activate the LED. But I'm not worried about it, I like that look anyway. There you have it guys, uh, complete cargo rack and rear LED bar install. Hope it helped you guys out, maybe you want to try something similar, let me know. Um, let me know what you think in the comments, subscribe, like this video, and follow me on Instagram because again, more pictures coming soon. Alright guys, see you soon.